On today's Minute of the Apes, Aldo is too cool for school. Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet Movies one minute at a time. I'm Todd. Richard was at the top. Uh, Sean, you're there somewhere. It like an you? echo in here or something. I don't know what's going on. Like we've been here before? Days I know. That, we, we, All uh, over again. With the whole new production style, we experienced the first time of ever having to stop down and do it all over again. So there it is. But here's a cool thing. Now I don't have to fix that in post. That's a lovely there sound for me. There you go. It's Friday. We're up to minute 15. Does anybody have business they want to talk about before, or do we want to get right to this? I say let's get to what, it. What kind of business? Well, I don't Funny know. Funny business? You know, Monkey business? What kind of business do you want to get into? Monkey Funny business? Monkey business. Monkey Sean, business. tell us what's going on with minute 15. All right. We're going to start minute 15 with Berger using that fancy talk of his, and then the Caesar <laughs> crushing Cornelius's dreams of a snow day. Here we go. Minute 15, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. I, um, I was there. Teacher only reverted to type under provocation here. He spoke like a slave master in the old days of our servitude when we were conditioned to mechanical obedience. He, uh, he uttered a negative uh, imperative. Could you put that into words which even Caesar could understand? Uh, he said, no, Aldo, no. <sighs> Uh, the schoolroom was wrecked. The class is ended. The schoolroom is closed. Now we go back to riding horses. <sighs> Aldo! You and your friends will return to the schoolroom and put it back in order. <clears throat> Abe, no gorilla is to be dismissed until everything is back in its place. Yes, Caesar. Father, since there won't be any more school today, May I go and play? Hmm. Uh, can't you study in the house? As of minute 15, we have a village worth of apes and humans. All right. We got a ton to unpack here. You know, anywhere we, we can jump where we can talk about Virgil's weird Yoda talk. Roddy's acting, yeah. Aldo's reactions, all the stuff. So and Caesar, we get a little bit of every single character in this minute. And every single character being who they are in this movie. True. And and you love those moments when characters act within the world that is created. They are true to who, who they will be throughout. Um, I, I think this is where I'm going to say, let's start with Virgil real quick, just with his, the weird ish ways that he speaks. Now it kind of lends. He, inter- he should have just said, he said no. <laughs> right. And, and that would have cut through everything. I am now going to, anytime my wife asks me something that I need to say no, I'm going to say it's a negative imperative. <laughs> I was like, what? Who, who has ever said that in the history of ape or mankind? It's a negatory. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I actually really liked uh, his delivery of this line because he, he had moments where he would pause he had moments where he would drag a word out. He had moments where he kind of started like uh, um, uh, when, when he said, put that in words, I can understand. Caesar going to understand Virgil. Instead of just saying, he said no, Aldo. No, he goes, uh, he said no. Aldo. Like he had some reluctance in saying he said no. He, he, he thought he did a really good job of making this sound like he wasn't reading a script. Oh, like he was I, just I totally kind of agree. thinking about it as, as he was talking. And I, I thought that was really nice because we do that too. We have these little moments of stuttering and these little moments of kind of going, uh, mm, without – going straight into perfect sentences and he he did great i I totally agree with that when characters when actors within a character have those moments of that their their mouth is going down a path but their brain has to stop to think it through and they give a um, you know this Mm -hmm. that's nice and i think what paul williams does here is fantastic i just find the way he speaks on uh, what's written on the page to be very peculiar but I do like it. 
I like but you, it. But you thought it was peculiar before when he was giving his, his time travel speech. So time travel speech, yeah. We're, we're building up the, the awkward nerd that is just kind of like um, too, well, delicate, he, too delicate about certain things and probably goes a long way to explain things rather than giving the simplest answer. I mean, it, that's the, most of my conversations during the day at the comic book store. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it's the, so they can give them the old trope of, hey, can you put this in English, please? Yeah. I love nerd talk. I love when somebody nails it, and it's, I just didn't expect it in an apes movie. I didn't expect to get an ape that spoke that way. So, so do you think that Caesar actually didn't understand what he was saying, or do you think he was doing that for the movie audience? He was being yeah, condescending or, to Virgil? Because I think that Caesar knew what he was saying. I think Caesar knew, but I think that it, it what it does is give us a nice moment. You can tell these two apes are friends. Have some sort of relationship. Yes, and it's yeah. it, it's almost like he's saying, please, Virgil, just just speak. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, I, he maybe want to hear the exact wording. But, yeah, I, I could see that. I could see two friends kind of bantering. Oh, come on. I'm just, you're, you're just dragging this out, dude. Come on. We're friends. Tell me what he said. <laughs> that would be nice if he called him dude. I would, I would giggle <laughs> so hard if he goes, come on, dude. <laughs> Well, well, you know what? Actually, this to to bring this back to see, to this moment with Caesar's line, uh, put that in words that even Caesar can understand. This is kind of the first real tight on his face, and we can it, to me it looks like they took his cheeks and added a few more lines under it to make him look just a little bit more mature. Mm -hmm. It's not dramatic; they didn't super age him, but they looked like they added some stress lines, like right around his cheeks, like mm -hmm. two or three, to kind of make him look a little more mature. Well, I could be wrong. And Roddy's acting here, you know, we, I don't think any of us would ever fault a single thing Roddy does. Um, no. His acting here is another great example of him using that makeup where he, when he's listening, it's, he always think his, I, the best term I could come with was like a chin click. It's not because the chin kind of pops just a little bit. And then whenever it comes to the, what the word is, he uses that brow so well. That he closes his eyes, like, could you say something that Caesar would understand? And then when he says no, Roddy lets that face wash, like, oh, Lord. And he's fantastic. Once again, here Roddy is. I don't know what these movies would be without Roddy. The, the, yeah. So well, it would, it would be the second movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's what it would be. Uh, yeah, I, I like the fact that he, he moves his, he does this little thing with his jaw that moves a little bit. You think he's called it clicking. It looked like he was kind of chewing something for yeah, like a half a yeah. second, but allows kind of a little bit of movement in that bottom of that mask. Uh, I like that Aldo is being Aldo, right? He says, Hey, I'm, I, I'm not doing that. We're going to go back to riding horses. You know, I, I'm going to blow this taco stand. Okay. Which so made me think, was that his plan all along is to come in, wreck the school. So they could just fuck off. He and his friends play. could just go and smoke uh -huh. the stadium. Uh -huh, by the by the locker room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right after they knock the gym house. over. Yeah. <laughs> All I could think of is when he says the school room is closed, now we go back to riding horses. And I don't even like this comedy skit from SNL, but I kept thinking now is the time on Sprockets when we dance. When he said now we go back to riding horses. <laughs> I could not get that out of my head. But yeah, he was he was he's playing to his type. He said, I'm gonna go back to doing what I enjoy, right? Come right. on, boys, let's get on our motorcycles and ride. Yeah. And so this is the moment when we finally get that Caesar's not forgotten that teacher's name is Abe. He just very casually and almost expectantly calls him Abe. I found that to be incredibly odd that you took the time to construct that Abe has forgotten his name. But Caesar uses it, and therefore for him to coincidentally use it would, to me, say he uses it often. Well, and he uses it either to the teacher or to uh, Cornelius, which is why Cornelius knows his name. I maybe. Mean, it, I mean, Caesar, maybe, you know, when, when uh, Cornelius comes home, he'll talk about what you did today, what was your schoolwork, and what did teacher Abe do this and Abe do that. So it's a possibility a teacher never hears his name because he never talks, has adult conversations. It's just weird um, that it, twice in one day he gets it. And, and I, I love your idea. I love your idea that I could see Caesar – how is school? We'll teach her this, this, and this. And if Cornelius were to say, he has his name, his name is Abe, you know, something like that to teach him almost that kind of thing where Caesar's trying to treat the humans with respect. But it's just weird that he has forgot. He hears his name, he's forgotten it, and then he gets to hear it again in a second day, second time yeah. in one day. 
But he, he is re, he's re uh, enforcing the authority of the teacher, which is nice. So the teacher yeah, yeah, yeah. He put A back in charge. Right, put A back in charge of the classroom, recognizing where where it could potentially go. I mean, he, that was that was kind of a nice pullback. And and also, he's now uh, taught that although you make up, yeah, you lie in your bed, now you got to make it up. You you made that mess. Nobody leaves until it's all cleaned up. Nobody goes home. Yeah, and, and I like that too. I, if you also notice when Aldo's getting reprimanded by Caesar, the it's kind of weird how in the background the apes are just standing about looking that way, but not immediately involved in the moment. In fact, there's some humans and whatnot milling around in the background that don't even take observation. We've just had a chase. Our king leader person is down here giving orders and everybody's kind of meh. But then you have this one orangutan and chimpanzee that are kind of looking at him like, what a bitch. Just sort of looking him up and down. Yeah. I hadn't noticed that. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, it, it was just of all the nice constructions that we've had, this was a weird moment. It was just kind of odd how uninvolved everyone is and they kind of turn away anyway. All right. So <laughs> then we get toward the end when Caesar, as you said, he gives him his power back. You know, it, it all but tells Aldo he needs to respect the teacher. He doesn't right. say that, but it tells him that. Put the class back in order, right? right? We're not going to mm-hmm. leave the class uh, in a disarray. I did find it odd that Caesar didn't, once Aldo was gone, take a moment to say, you knew, you know the rule. If, you, if you've forgotten them, reacquaint yourself with them. Well, that, well, that's just it. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't necessarily need to scold the teacher, but I like your idea of him reminding him. He didn't, right, right. Uh, you know, kind of lesson learned moment, but he didn't remind the teacher. We can't. This is not where we are now. This is not how we conduct things. You we, need, we we have to be better than the human. I I can't always be there. See, that's what I like. That I can't always be there to stop this. And what I like is if if Caesar had done something like this, it truly shows how he's a leader of both the humans and the apes. He takes the time to reprimand both in their own way. Aldo needed – he's a child that needs to be told, clean your room. That's your punishment. Take care of it. Show respect. The teacher needs to be reminded that, you know, you give knowledge to everyone and you have to be the most knowledgeable of them all. And you forgot our essential rule. He should have taken that time. And it, it, what does that do for the audience? It tells us once again how important that rule is to everyone. There, I mean, the script did have some dialogue back and forth between uh, this gentleman who may or may not be McDonald, uh, the teacher, and Caesar that would have kind of gone over all of that. Okay. You want to read that to us? Yeah. Uh, teacher, you're, this, is, this is the person we don't know as McDonald or not. Teacher, you're old enough to be aware that no is one of the word – uh, a human may never say to an ape because apes once heard it said to them a hundred times by a day by humans. Teacher goes, yes, I am old enough. Okay. So maybe we're suggesting there's a generation that were, that, that was raised specifically here. The teacher says he's old enough. Then what was the provocation? And he goes, general Aldo Torp writing exercise written, especially for me by my, by Caesar's son. It was very good and respectful and affectionate. Um, Caesar then turns to Aldo. Then why did you tear it up? Um, and then a young chimp is supposed to chime in from the crowd because teachers said that the general's writing was very bad. So that then somebody's showing how they're both kind of at wrong, fault for this moment. Caesar then goes, General Aldo is a very good writer. My son is not. My son is a very good writer. General Aldo is not. An ape with very few exceptions cannot excel at everything. That is all there is to it. The matter is forgotten. Now go back to school. Um, then Virgil tells him the school has been um, wrecked. And that's when we get the Aldo line. The class has ended. School was closed. We go back to writing. So it picks up from there. So there's like a little back and forth of he said, she said, and a reminder. There is the reminder to teacher that they're not supposed to actually say this no, and that he should be old enough to remember that. I would have. It, it would have been interesting if they kept a bit about not uh, an ape can't do all things. So that yeah. would explain how they're so segregated in the future right. that the gorillas eventually. See, I would have liked become the warriors and the. The orangutans, the scholars, and the the scientists or the chimpanzees. I would have liked all of that kept. What I would have liked is let's go back to the schoolroom. Let's remove Virgil giving the lesson on the rules, and let's give it back, as one of you suggested, to Aldo. You know, no human can tell – humans are not supposed to say no to ape, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then we come over here. Now, let's take what what Cornelius says to teacher. 
let's keep the scene the way it is, where he reprimands Aldo, sends him off, and that's when Caesar turns to him. If then Caesar is the one that says, no human must do this, that's why we did that. He's teaching, he's leading, that would have made him very powerful. 